Between 2015 and 2016, in a period shorter than six months, more than half a million refugees, men and women and families with children, journeyed through the Balkan fields, to forests and cornfields, and along train tracks, facing dust and rain, heat and cold, in hope that they would reach the heart of Europe. Today we ask, where are they now? This is only a fragment, a condensed story of the experience of some of those multitudes of homeless travelers and some who volunteered to help. Hundreds and hundreds of people, maybe thousands, who are only passing here through Belgrade. With the little kids, people who are poor, people who are young, uh, women, children. They desperately want to leave their country. Most of them are from Syria, Iraq and uh, neighboring countries in the Middle East. They desperately want to go to Germany, Sweden, Netherlands and the countries like this. We just distribute them uh, food, we distribute them uh, things to sleep like uh, tents, shoes, uh, warm clothes and some food. But most of them are really in the need of a help and they cannot travel without the help. Hungarian border police is just behind this fence, only a few meters away from me. They are not very happy that we are looking at them and that we are filming and that we are taking pictures. Every one of them wants to get you. Yes. The government from one side, the ISIS from one side, the other parts from one side. You cannot go for a simple walk. So your trouble is that actually you have many enemies? Of there. course. It's not just one side? More than two, three sides maybe. Believe me, if I, I have somewhere to go, I will go back right now. I just said goodbye to two wonderful people and they, they came and they asked me for coffee. We're just sorry we, we didn't think about that. You know, they're just normal people, beautiful people. They, they studied English literature and they left their families back there. Such a mess. It's a lot of pain. It's a lot of, a lot of drama. I saw a, a one month, two months uh, old baby and I was wondering what, what is this, this guy doing here in the middle of this, this mess, this dirt. We are now at the border between Serbia and Croatia. So this is just a field road and people are coming with buses from uh, Belgrade or from Hungarian border also and from down from, from Macedonian border. And then they continue road through these corns till they get to Croatian border. One bus after the other, the groups of 50 and 100 people are constantly, constantly coming. So we have bought some of the stuff that might give them some energy, some juices, some water, some croissants and bananas they love very much. And a number of other little things, something that they can eat as they walk. We have no political agenda, we have no political interests. Our only interest is to be representatives of Jesus, who simply do what Jesus says, whatever you did to the least of those, you have done to me. What I see it's actually people with hope as they are just walking, smiling, being together, families. Today we were a big group and just a collaboration because we were so many people. We had people from the States, we had media, we had and we put everything what we brought together and we were just one group. The people were overwhelmed by goodness today. And I think right now we are expecting two more buses, more than a thousand five hundred people I think we just went through today, we served today. And I have this impression that people were in a hurry but in a hopeful hurry that after the border something good is waiting for them. So I saw different kind of people. I saw people that seemed educated, people that, uh, that seemed like simple people, also families. We saw the family with uh, two children, twins, three, uh, three months old. I saw a lot of children carrying bags, bags half their size. I saw that people were grateful for finding uh, not only us, but here was a big group of people. And Mostly they were very hungry. We gave them the food we had and water when needed. We saw many children and people on need, some of them and on wheelchairs. 
guy came with a kid who had a surgery, a hip surgery. Two years old, not more than two, had a hip surgery 10 weeks ago. I don't know, like every, since we are here for four hours, probably every 10, 15 minutes you have a bus to with 50. So all the time people, people are coming. Today I was very encouraged by the story of um, a man, his son, in his own words he said, the Muslim world turned their back to us and the Christians opened their hearts for all of us. And I was so touched by that comment. Ahead of me there are hundreds and hundreds of refugees walking from the station where we are stationed and delivering water, food and the other goods. We are about two kilometers, one and a half a mile away approximately. And while our team is delivering the food and whatever else is needed for those people to, to help them at least a little bit, uh, to at least get across this distance from our point to the border. I learned about uh, what love in action means. I needed to come here and see it uh, with my own eyes. We, we live tired, but we live with, with so much richness in our souls. It is a moving and painful picture to say this, and, and I do not know what to say about those people who know better and are trying to tell us that these people are terrorists and I don't know what. When you see mothers with little babies and children walking, there could have been uh, 20 plus children and few parents and maybe people who cannot really walk. They are collecting people 40 by 40 because Croatians don't want to accept more than 40 people at a time. So we have Czech volunteers who came because they feel ashamed of their garment, not doing much. And they're helping a lot. They put all the uh, tents and then people walk on these uh, blankets. It is already snowing and the people are in the blankets. There are lots of volunteers who are helping here and distributing the blankets to the people. Poor people are freezing in these uh, in these conditions. There is a place here where they can go to the toilet. There is a drinking water offered to them. There is a medical doctor, and it is written in English, in Arabic, so people can understand what's what's happening. The people are sitting here in the buses. They're about to be shipped to Croatia and further to the western western countries. We came here and we started celebrating Christmas basically from the very first day we were here. We were finishing two sheds where mothers coming from thousands of kilometers away, they're going to nurse their, their babies. And that is what Mary did many, many years ago. Uh, she had no place where to nurse uh, the little Jesus. So to me personally, this is a great metaphor. Three years later, we dare ask, where are they now? Those hundreds of thousands of the traveling homeless. Some of them have been accommodated in new countries, we know that. But what happened to the others, to the most of them? Are they still wandering from one country to another, unwelcome, shifted and tossed around? How many of them are alive? Are their families together? Are their children safe? So we ask, where are they now? Think about that. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Freedom, all the best to you. Yeah, freedom. I want to, to, to ask people to stop judging on other people. Because if you are not here, in the middle of action, actually, you, 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 you don't know what, what it means. Please stop judging and start acting.